actually, I don't know if you remember, but I actually remember my pro debut was the Night of the Champions, the year you won and Charles Claremont got second. Um, and I had to pull out of that show down to Diuretics. I remember that. And the following morning, I remember sitting in Denny's with my father, devastated that I couldn't compete, watching you do that infamous photo shoot with Chris Long right in Times Square. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I remember that very I, well. Yeah. I, I, that, that, was, that was my induction into my uh, professional bodybuilding. And and why, did you pull, why did you pull out? Diuretics. I uh, took some bad advice. I used uh, aldactazide. And the morning of the show, I literally right. couldn't put my hand to my mouth. I was in a, I was in a real bad way. Wow, that's that's incredible. You know, I've had a couple of bouts like that, but you know, I never really took a lot of diuretics. I always used a certain protocol, and I didn't deviate much from that. Yeah. You know, but you remember when Paul <coughs> Dillard had the situation at the Arnold Classic? I, absolutely, I do. Yes. That was incredible. It looked like somebody had taken a like a shark had taken a side out of him. Yeah. That's how much his, his, his body was spasming. Yeah, no, I remember it well. I actually remember being at the Arnold Classic one year and Mike Matarazzo got rushed on a gurney into the elevator and Sandy Riddell, I think, who was dating at the time, was by his side and he looked like he, he'd already gone. He was, Wasn't uh, he using, uh, I think he was using the same protocol uh, Momo Beneziza was using, right? Lasix, I think so. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was sure. using a combination of slow K and then Momo was only eating green apples. I think Steve would remember that. Yeah. You know, yeah. for his fluid, which is a high in potassium in itself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I, uh, I think, what year did you retire, Carter? Because I, I don't think I came across you after that. Um, I, well, when I walked away, I walked away. I mean, I, I couldn't take it anymore, to be honest with you. But I walked away four weeks before the Olympia in 99. Right. Yeah, I just yeah. Yeah, I was ready for the show. I was just waiting, but um, I'd had a couple as soon as I was battling the drug usage, to be honest with you. And I find myself, um, I tell people all the time, most of my bodybuilding career, I kind of felt like a uh, an artist. Yeah. And so that was, be. yeah. But then I started feeling like a bodybuilder, and that's when I I felt it was time to quit. Yeah. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Because yeah. the sport was changing. It makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You remember me? Uh, my first Champion Fox, my first two pro shows, you competed in it. I did? In 96 at the Arnold's. I remember competing with you. I remember competing with you, but I don't know specifically yeah. when. I can't remember all the shows. My first two pro shows were the 96 Arnold's and the San Jose Pro a week later in 96. In 96. Yeah, you got, uh, 40, you got 8th and 10th. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I didn't fill out that show. Really I remember tense. doing things a little different at that show. I remember that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And is that your first show? Yes. And then how did you end up doing? I can't recall. Uh, you placed eight. I placed nine in San Jose. You placed 10. I placed fifth. That's awesome. Yeah. You were one That's of those awesome. little perfect guys around me there, which I, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, incredible. Uh, Ian, both both of you guys had incredible physiques, though. Oh, yeah. Uh, Steve, too. Porter, what did you what did you weigh on stage? What was what about your average weight, your competition weight? Like when I was winning? Yeah. Um, around two seven, two eight. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I well, just that's true. I, I think a, a couple of times I might have been at two two ten to eleven, but somewhere around that general vicinity. How tall are you, Porter? Five seven. Yeah, I, I just remember you having an incredibly balanced physique. So this is now interesting. 207, 208. So uh, I'm wondering where you would rank all time uh, in an all time best list in the 212 category. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I think, you know, the last Mr. Olympia I did when, in 99, uh, right before I got just fed up and I quit, like just a, like a switch went off, uh, I was 222. Yeah, and that's just too much. It's too much for me. So, which one would you consider your absolute best? My honestly, a ninety-two, Mister Olympia. What was your weight there? Two hundred four, two hundred five. Yeah, incredible. So you definitely, you definitely one of the 
One of the and you got a top 10. You got a top 10 on that too. Yeah, that was my first Mr. Olympia. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I felt I was my, I go by conditioning guys. When I felt like I was, I remember, you know, everyone has their little signals. And I remember uh, it was the first time I competed abroad, number one. Number two, I remember being in the shower and I think Steve might have been in my room. Uh, but anyway, neither are there. And I'm trying to shave my abs. Now, I know this sounds crazy, guys. I'm trying to shave my abs and I couldn't because there were so deep of crevices. I was trying to reach back with my arm just to be able to get in between the crevices to shave my stomach. I remember that. And I thought that was the best shape I'd ever been in. And a couple other times I was in great shape, but that one stands out to me. Hmm. That's how, uh, you know, just little things you have. Um, Porter, let me, let me back up a little bit. When did you, your, your first show was in 88 junior nationals. Is, is that when you kind of got into bodybuilding? When did you, when did you get into bodybuilding? No, no. My first show was 19, um, my very first show was 1983. I got into Mr. Louisville, I weighed 152. 10 months later, I got into the Mr. Louisville and in 84, and I won the Mr. Louisville one weekend, the Mr. Kentucky the next weekend. Okay. Then before the junior nationals, a year later, I won the Mr. Continental USA, and then I won my first junior nationals. Okay. And then um, and then I went on to win a uh, place. Uh, I got drug tested. Remember when they did drug testing? They tried it in the first nationals. Mm -hmm. uh, well, they drug tested me positive for something. I have no clue because I wasn't taking anything. The only thing I took for that show this is this only thing I tell everyone the truth. The only thing I took for that show was 10 I use 10 I use a week of, uh, of growth hormone. And that's all I took for 12 weeks. Oh, wow. And they said they, they tested me for something. So I couldn't compete. And then the following uh, nationals in Miami is when Franco Santorello won. Uh, Flex Wheeler, I remember, weighed 189 pounds and placed fifth. And I placed third, but I was sick. I was sick prior to that show. And then Kevin and I did the nationals and I won my pro card in that in the 91 nationals. Mm -hmm. okay. And your big win was uh, your Chicago pro win. That was uh, 92. Well, yeah. Well, my biggest win that I would consider, uh, no, I'm the night of the champions. Night champions. Okay. Yeah. Because, you know, that was one of the most prestigious shows, you know, Oh my God, the night of the champions in New York. Mm -hmm. da, da, da. Mm -hmm. You know, I thought it was, a, you know, I was proud of that. You know, I'm proud of everything to be honest with you, but um, mm -hmm. that was my, one of my most memorable mm -hmm wins if you will <clears throat> because it's one of those uh one of those years but like back then often the case with like 50 competitors on stage in new york oh yeah yeah, yeah. The, the the year i did the 90 champions with kevin kevin a tourist peck and he won in 92 and that 90 and 93 i think there was 40 something guys there yeah mm -hmm. i was in that you show. were in that show wasn't there 40 something I guys yeah yeah there was it was i don't remember the number exactly but yeah I took 12th in that. It was a tough show. You know, yeah, guys, if I, may, if I may say this, back even back then, it was so deep, the quality of the competitors, yeah. in my opinion. But, I mean, I, I guess I'm being maybe a little bit prejudiced toward the, the 90s, but I think it was one of the greatest eras. But there wasn't just like the top five. I mean, it was the top 10, 15, and, and even 20-something in the freaking Night of the Champions. It was a hard show. Mm -hmm. It that was, was second to the Olympia. What, what was the Arnold Classic that had started then, right? Yeah, but the Arnold, I don't know if the Arnold Classic was Arnold Classic's huge now, I think, but it was, was it was there. But the three largest shows was Olympia, the Arnold, and the Night of Champions. Yes. Yeah, at that point in time. When, yeah, mm -hmm. when du Wayne Demilia ran it. Right, right. Exactly. The Night of the Champions was like a proving ground. Yeah. If you could go in and win the Night of the Champions, you were a hot favorite to go into the Olympia. Olympia. Very, very yeah. Well. Right. Mm -hmm. Phil, I had no idea you did that Night of the Champions. Yeah, I remember that show. <laughs> Man, I would, that, that was my, supposed to be my pro debut. I was telling Porter. And, uh, I Phil did a show too? Phil, you did that show? Yeah, I was 12th in that show. Kevin won. That's right. You were saying that. Second. Was that 93 or 92? 90. Two, it had to be. All right, not the one I'm on about that. It was not. Yeah, because that's when Kevin won in '92. Oh, it was it was the year Kevin won. Right. Yeah. Okay. Now that was yeah. a great show. I think you were. And Robbie second, Robinson right? was in that. Right. Yeah, I stood next to Robbie. Uh, man, it had something. Yeah. I got. Uh, let me say. Let, let me say something to you guys. I mean, I know everyone has memorable moments, but if I, you know, you talk about memorable things in bodybuilding. Uh, for whatever reason, at the very. Uh, it's this latter part of the uh, second the second round. 
we were getting ready to walk off stage and a European judge said, for whatever reason, they wanted Robbie and myself to come out on stage, right? And we did our comparisons here on compulsories. And it was just Robbie and I. And you know, the only thing I can think of guys is I was thinking back to when I would, was in 11th grade. Instead of doing my schoolwork, I was looking at pictures of Robbie and Danny Padilla. And here I was, you know, just some hard work and, and believing in yourself, standing next to, next to Robbie Robinson doing comparisons. That's probably one of my most memorable moments in a sport of bodybuilding. Yeah, that's cool. I agree with that. that. That was me standing next to Robbie. I remember that more than anything else. Uh, me, uh, right on. And he still looks incredible. Oh, my gosh. Oh, jeez. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. Absolutely. So speaking of uh, 92, Porter, um, yeah. you know it's coming up on the 20th anniversary of Momo's death, right? 30. 30 years? Is it 30 yeah. years? 30th, 30. I'm sorry. 30 years? Yeah, October 4th, hey. was it? You mind if I get a word in there so I can say hi to my buddy, Porter? Go. Hey, Sorry. Steve. Go ahead, Steve. Sorry, Steve. What's going on, buddy? It's great seeing you. What about the little guys you. here, man? What about the little guys? I, listen, that's what it's about, the little guys. Mm -hmm. You know? It's great seeing you, Steve. How are you, brother? I'm doing fine, my friend. You doing okay? Yes, sir, man. Great and you're back in the body, buddy, now. Yeah, I kind of put on the size again, man. I don't know what happened. After 30 years, something happened. I got a kick in the ass. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the hell Listen, I, I tell everyone, you know, I'm on my 26th year of my personal training business, but I don't know how you all feel, but I love working out more today than I ever have loved working out. Yeah. And oh. I, I, I couldn't imagine life without it. Yeah. Yep. I agree. You know? mm. I got to agree. I disagree that. strongly. <laughs> disagree everyone agree? You disagree? Does he, did he say disagree he disagrees? strongly. Yeah, I, I, I mean, extremely strongly, you know, I, mean, I, I like to take the bike out, although my bike has a motor. <laughs> so at least incredible. I take it out and if the wind blows in my back, I turn it off and sprint, you know, but uh, the gym, I, I could live without it. I do three or four times a week, but it's just slight stuff. You know, I, I could live without it, but it not be for, you know, I gotta have to look somewhat okay and it's good for health reasons, mm -hmm. but I could absolutely live without it, you know. Yeah, really? You could just walk away and never work out again? If it, if, if, uh, if God would tell me it will not harm you in any way, but it, when it comes to life expectancy and quality, right. uh, it, it, I, I would never work out again. See, it, it, it's my favorite time of the day when I work out. That's incredible, though. Yeah, well, we yeah. know that for the fact that today's science and everything has discovered that working out with weights is by far the number one thing in the world to improve your immunity in all parts. We all know that. Yeah, you, now. you have to. You got to work out. There's no way around yeah. it. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It overtakes yeah. by ten to one, and mm -hmm. cardio's out the window. Start weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's going to be a part of my life until I die. You know, and I, yeah. I hope. You know, really, the way I think now, guys. You know, we're fortunate because we've had so many passings mm -hmm. over the last few years of people passing away, uh, and all contribute to chemical usage. Of course, I'm yeah. sure there's other underlying issues. But point being is that, you know, this is the only thing that's keeping us youthful. This is the only thing keeping us striving. And if we want to increase our longevity and enjoy our life, we mm -hmm. have to make it a part of our life. We just are not to the degree we used to. I still train hard, yeah. but I just don't want my body weight to be real heavy. I can't handle, you know, 225, right. 235 anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I stay at 180 all the time. You're at 180 uh, right now? Yeah, I weigh 180. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't really fluctuate, mm -hmm. you know. How, how old are you, Porter? I just turned 61. Wow. Yeah, you look great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm still the oldest. <laughs> Do what? I'm still the oldest one. <laughs> How old do you feel? 62. 62 yeah. years young, my friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and that's don't the way you have it, to look at it. I don't feel it until I pass by a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> you feel young. <laughs> oh, man. I try to avoid those oh, at all costs. Mm. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Cool. and you have uh, your paramedic background, right, Porter? Yeah, I worked for the fire department for 22 years, and I was basically based, more based on EMS, you know, so I worked more as an EMT or EMT position. 
even if you weren't an EMT, you worked as an EMT through just aiding the paramedics and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, and we made more medical runs than we did anything, really, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Are you still with them? No, I retired right before my son was born. I retired February 1st of 2009 with 27 years. Where was that at? Okay. Uh, Louisville Fire Department. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, city of Louisville. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So I, I had to maintain, you know, I had to, we were so fortunate, guys, because my first 10 years, if I'm honest with everyone, of the fire department when I was bodybuilding, I, I might have worked six years of that because I was off so much with bodybuilding. We can have people work for us, and I would make trades and have people work for me, and mm -hmm. I would mm -hmm. travel. If it wasn't for that, I could have done that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Ronnie didn't have the same thing because he had a, like a not nine to five or second shift, first shift, or whatever he would do. Mm -hmm. Mine was 24, 48, so it allowed me to do that. Yeah. Right. I train with a couple guys that, that compete or firefight. I'm with the sheriff's office down here. Uh, oh, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. great. Listen, mm -hmm. you don't realize it. It was like, like I was some genius or something, but the, the pensions were incredible. And thank God mm -hmm. I stayed with it because, you know, even though I was somewhat successful in my early part of my bodybuilding career, I thought about quitting. And I, I thank God all the time that I didn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I'll tell you something came into play, man, when we were in uh, in Europe in 92. Uh, I mean, that whole story behind mm -hmm. that, man. I mean, I, no one yeah, I want to I hear it from Porter, because, Steve, you talked about it a little bit. But, yeah. uh, Porter, you were there, and you um, – so if you guys want to talk about it, you know. Well, go ahead, Stevie. Yeah. Interesting time, brother. Very interesting. Uh, it, was, it was unfortunate. It was in the ne Netherlands, right? But I will uh, tell you that. I will tell you some, some things nobody knows, and probably only Porter and I to this day. Um, you know, I was um, fortunate enough to um, to help Momo out back in the day because being French, you know, some you know by default with respect, I was his friend, and we became pretty decent friends. Every time we go to a show, I would have to translate for him and so on. But it was very interesting because I'm, I'm wondering if you remember this, Porter. You know, I, I was sitting by Momo one day, and uh, Porter come over and asked a question, and Momo kind of got snippy with him right away. And I turned to Momo in French and said, why did you talk to him that way? This guy's a great guy, man. And Momo was at a bad place in his life at the time, and I knew it then because there was another incident where we were in England. And I don't know if you remember, Porter, they put two of us to a room when we were in the England Grand Prix back then. Right. And and they ended up putting me with Momo. I said, hey, and he was happy about it, which was no problem. And then all of a sudden, his girlfriend was in there. And, oh, and yeah. a breakout happened with him and his girl. And he was screaming and everything. And I had to leave the room. And I ended up going in the room with you, Porter. It was you, me, and I don't even remember who else was in our room. Because I left his room to go get ready for the show in your room. Uh, who was I with? I was with a friend of mine that was traveling with me, is who was in my room. Yep. I remember backstage, there was a, this thing backstage, all the bodybuilders getting ready to go on. They gave us each a room. There was two bodybuilders to a room. Oh, yeah. And yeah. then I had to, I went to your room because a incident happened with uh, Momo back then. But um, it was interesting because here's a guy who didn't have respect for, for Porter back in the day. And I never understood why. He, never uh, he, he didn't like me right off the bat. No, I didn't understand that. And yet here was at the end of this entire tour – Porter's trying to save this guy's life, man. And um, it was a really bizarre scene, man. And, and I, you know, Porter, I think you remember I came in. Theory Pastel came knocking at my door. It was like 3 or 4 in the morning. I opened it, and he was screaming, Momo needs some help. I went in there, and um, Al Q. Gurley was on top of Momo. He was trying to perform CPR. He didn't know what he was doing. I ran to your room, banged on the door. You came out right away. And unbeknownst to all you guys, Porter was doing CPR on this guy for the better part of about 35 to 40 minutes easily. Oh. And because we were in the middle of nowhere and he couldn't stop. Mm -hmm. But what happened at that point, that Porter, you can take over after this. I looked down, Porter looked up at me and he gave me a look because he had been doing this for so long. And I had no idea, but the look that he gave me, I knew that he was gone. Mm -hmm. And then, Porter, just the way he looked, and they came and got him, took him downstairs, and got took off. Everybody thought he was going to be fine, and Porter and I went mm -hmm. for a walk behind the hotel, and we both broke down in tears, man. Mm -hmm. That's, That's exactly right. 
prior yep. to y'all finding him, when, when was the last time y'all saw him alive? At the show. Uh, we, we, we all hotel were together. Party? Well, well, yeah, but remember, we were all in the band. It was Terry Pastel, Milos, all of us. And then look, see, here's what's incredible, guys. Uh, let me just say something to you, a couple of things pertaining to MoMA. Uh, Stevie, I don't even know if I've ever, ever told you this. And this is guys on the Remember we were staying in Rotterdam outside of Amsterdam in that small village. And yes. it has a, a picturesque like a sailboats and stuff coming. And we were setting out on the cobblestone thing. But anyway, Momo was not a fan of me. And I don't know why. And that's okay. Not everyone's going to like everyone. That's okay. Um, but right before we left to that show, Steve, I was sitting on a bench watching the sailboats come in by myself and momo came and sat down with me i did not know that. and even though there was a conflict of communication it's almost if i may say this it, i felt like he was making his peace wow. with me amazing and I, i'm being i'm being sincere and i remember yeah. uh we were getting ready to, you know how we pump up backstage yeah. We were getting ready to walk out and go, we had to go through this corridor and walk out on stage in Holland. And I kind of mentioned to Momo, I just gave him a thumbs up. He was right in front of me. He turned around and he did a most muscular. I thought, oh my God, this guy is freaking, he looks like one of these dolls, man, that you buy. That's just so, you know, everything's so accentuated. And, right. you know, he started dying on stage. You know that. <laughs> he, he started dying on stage. He kept going off stage. Remember that wedding that happened? Yep. And we didn't know this, guys, but he was dying. And we went back. The first and second round was over, and we're doing the, the third round, which is the posing. And we're all backstage, and I'm standing right next to Momo. And I can't remember if it was uh, Aku Gary, or Henderson Thorne, or somebody said, hey, do you want some gummy bears to Momo? And he shook his head no. And all of a sudden, he turned, and he projectile vomited <coughs> Remember that, Steve, on that yep. wall? Yep. I mean, guys, a projectile vomit. Puke went everywhere. Mm. And then that whole time on stage, we didn't realize he was puking. He was going off stage puking, coming back, going off stage puking, and then coming back. And so he was dying right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then remember, we got it all. We had to stay over for this ceremony thing, Steve. And yep. everyone got in the van. It was our last show. We're going back home. And he, he was Still in the shower, standing against the wall like this with the yep. water. Yep. 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 Power to the van. I don't remember who carried him from the shower to the van. I remember him you got somebody dragging his bringing him to the van. He wasn't able to walk. And I don't know if you're the one that uh, your signal's bad, Steve. What's that? Your signal's going oh, bad. No. Uh oh. Yeah. But Steve, one of the contributing factors to IQ having a problem doing CPR, <clears throat> if you remember, when you called yeah. me, I went down and they he was trying to do it on the bed. So yeah. I remember we, we dragged him down to the floor. Mm -hmm. And then when I built when I bit when I bent down, you know, which I gotta make sure he's not he's not breathing, he's breathing or not breathing, he took his last breath right there. Yeah. Oh, you just know. Okay. I've, I've done CPR a hundred times or more. Mm -hmm. You just know. So, but you once you start CPR, it is what it is. You got to go with it. Right. So, if I understand this right, he finished the show. Yes, and he won. <clears throat> okay. Oh. He was beating everyone. Yeah. And his girlfriend, yeah. which was twenty-two at the time, had never been around bodybuilding, and then she had experienced that dramatic situation. Uh, wow. Yeah. Hey, how old was he? Thirty something years old. Thirty-two, thirty-three. At that time, he was he's a little older than a couple he's years older, older than, than us. Yeah, a couple right, years. Steve? Yeah, about a couple of years, I think it was, man. Uh huh. He was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What a sad situation, you know. But he died what he loved doing. Yeah. But there was yeah. no reason. There was, was no reason. For in, that. He was born in '59. He died at '92. So he yeah. I, so he yeah, was, I was born in '61. So yeah, he would have been a few years older than us. Yeah. Man. Yeah, that's a that's a sad situation, Stephen. Yep. I made it it's funny because you know I got afraid at that time and seeing that, and even though I wasn't you know, a major kind of user when it comes to the, the you know, the juice back in the day. It's just, I got nervous and it was a very 
regrettable decision on my part to walk away for something like that because I, other things were coming my way, and, which never happened. But I know I left a lot on the table. But after seeing Momo go through that, you know, I was at the top of my career in this in this sport, and and that's the first time you and I, Porter, you know, of the whole tour, we got to know each other really well. Man. Yeah. And um, it was a, a very odd situation to go through at the end like that, man. And me walking away, saying, "I'm seeing, I'm out of here, guys." And uh, you know, watching all these great guys go on and do well over the years. But um, you know, Momo was he. I, I believe that he kind of set a standard to, so to speak, right about a certain time with him and Dorian on the size and the and the things they were doing. Um, and obviously, he was on massive amounts of diuretics. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. Um, do you think that's what um, killed him? Oh, I absolutely. Thought, yeah, I saw it take a bunch of them while I was there, yes. man. Well, you remember, Steve. Remember when we went to the hospital? And in, in Europe, it's a little bit different. You know, they set them up in the bed and they put a sheet above, like right below their chest. And we went in and paid our respects. Uh, they said his potassium level was 10.4 or 10.5. So what caused the projectile vomiting, my understanding, is that when your potassium level starts to spike, you're, you're, you're going into renal failure. And that is what was going on. But um, he was taking, my understanding, he was taking slow K using Lasix. And instead of drinking water, his protocol, Steve, you can correct me. I think his protocol was eating green apples for his fluid. Is that, I, I, am I they, off on that? I'm not drinking a lot of water and eating something different. I don't remember what the heck it was, but he was not drinking enough. And I knew that looking at him back then. I never heard the and, green apple thing. I didn't know that. No, that's what I thought he was doing. Or he's eating apples. I, I was under the impression he's eating green apples. But mm -hmm. that being said, it spiked his, you know, he's already uh, dehydrated, but it spiked his potassium level real high, which I think causes renal failure. And that's just a snowball. It's snowball. But Mo, hey, Steve, remember we took him out of the van? Yeah. He couldn't stand and we basically carried him to his room. Do you remember that? Yeah. Yep. You remember how. His legs felt like concrete. Do you remember yeah. that by chance? Yeah. I, 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 oh, that you just you hit the nail on the head with that. I remember somebody saying something about that. That walking in the van or outside of the van, somebody said his legs feel like concrete. They, they did. They felt as hard as like this this uh, was, granite right here. It, yeah. It was just yeah. And then we just talk him up there like it'll be cool. No, it wasn't cool. Hmm. You know. Is that from the cramping up? From the cramping up, or why are they so hard? The legs. Well, he'd been, he'd been vomiting for like hours and hours and he hadn't been drinking because he, he was drinking Coca-Cola backstage. I watched him do that. And he was trying to bring himself back like Mike Malrazzo tried to bring himself back and he couldn't. And, you know, and by the way, guys, uh, my understanding is he had a bout like this at the Arnold or at a show a year before that, similar to this, but he brought himself back. And I mm -hmm. think in his brain, he mm -hmm. thought he could overcome this situation at the same time. Now, did he refuse to go to the hospital or that, I mean, did anybody try to take him to the hospital or talk about well, it? Well, I don't, we, we drove right past the hospital. Honestly, if I may say this, and I, I always liked Wayne, <clears throat> Wayne should have forced him to go to the hospital. Mm -hmm. we, we should have stopped right there at the hospital and maybe, maybe, we don't know, maybe he could have survived this situation. Right. Well, we know at the beginning of the night, well, see, after the contest, downstairs at the hotel or, or or if it was downstairs or next door or whatever there was they had this big party for us at a bar or something oh, that's what it was yes mm -hmm. yes and i remember walking away momo was sitting in the chair he was just sitting back like this and his head sitting back and i walked by him i said say something in french you okay momo you all right and i can see his eyes sunken into the back of his head i'm thinking wow this guy doesn't look good wow. and that was and i i've been sleeping for an hour because we had to all get up early and go back to our countries and I don't think it was an hour before Terry well, knocked him. Do you remember he puked? He was puking in the van too. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. And remember Terry Pascal was helping him. Yep. You know? Do you remember? You that's... Yeah. And I think Sonny Smith was there too. And it was me, Milo, Sonny. Yes. Uh, yeah. Terry Pascal, yeah. me. And I, I think for someone else, I can't remember. His girlfriend, I know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I know that. The paramedics came there that night before this happened, the final day. They were there about an hour or so before. I'm not sure what it was. But when they called them the second time, it took them 45 minutes to arrive. Yeah, yeah. yeah we and just CPR almost 45 minutes. Wow. Yeah. Phil, do you have something? Yeah, I was going to ask. Uh, the fact that he didn't speak English, do you think perhaps he couldn't express himself? 
And did- uh, I don't think so, Phil, because he was pretty open with me to some degree speaking in French. But even at the show, he wasn't saying much and noticing some of that. You know, I, I was noticing in the back of my, my head, like just in the corner of my eye, so to speak, that, you know, he was getting sick and vomiting. But I was more concerned about myself doing well, not realizing how bad he was until, you know, after right. the end of the night. But um, we spoke and I asked him many times, you all right, Momo, when he was in the shower, Momo, do you need some help? Because no, I'm okay. Let me just stand here for a while. And I went to the van, and we were waiting there for a while. And then they went back in, and somebody, the yeah. guys, carried him out to the van. At that point, he may have thought he could just get through it. Oh, yeah, yeah, he thought he could work it out. <laughs> I'll tell you. I'll tell you what, though. It, that, this whole incident changed bodybuilding. It sent shockwaves through bodybuilding worldwide. <clears throat> Momo was, I mean, he was a, an incredible athlete. He beat Dorian. Uh, it was one of the and tonight the champions, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he beat Dorian at the night of the champions. I mean, he was one of the up, up and coming superstars. And when this happened, I think this yeah. correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this was the first death that was that was I don't say uh, broadcast, but that everybody was aware of as a, in professional bodybuilding. <coughs> and, uh, uh, yeah, I, I think you're right. I believe yeah. it is. Yeah, that was associated with it. Mm-hmm, that, that, that's. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I, I know it changed with Wayne D'Amelia. You know, I <laughs> throughout my whole career, I didn't really care for Wayne. I felt like he was <laughs> responsible for my whole demise as an IFB pro. But yeah. I'm actually in touch with him now. It, it, now we're a bit older. I, I speak to Wayne regularly. Um, but looking back, I think that affected Wayne tremendously. I don't know if it was personal or a lot from a liability standpoint. But when I had to pull out of the Night of the Champions where I was supposed to be competing against you, Porter, he pulled, he, he basically told me, you're out. You know, once I couldn't, he, he got me to try and lift my arms out to the side and I couldn't do it. I was just shaking. And he said, he said, yeah, I'm pulling you out of the show. You're not competing. Uh, so yeah. he, now, he, was that was that after the death of yes. Momo? Yes. Ian? After, yeah. the, the year after, actually. Yeah. Okay. It was the year well, after. Gotcha. Wayne had received some death threats from his family after the fact. Oh, wow, really? Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Uh, I remember talking with that with um, who gave me the interview in the magazine. That's, I think it was Chris Lund telling me about it or somebody. I don't remember, but uh, vague, But apparently Wayne got some, some you know, because he was from Algiers. Right. You know, that was a crazy country, but he lived in France. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Uh, Algerian is a French country in Africa, <clears throat> but uh, he apparently had some death threats back then, man. Wow. Did not know that. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Chris Lund. Who's got some good memories from Chris Long? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Real good one, Chris. Chris. Long, I used to have such a laugh doing shoots with Chris Long. Chris was a blast. I I I loved him. He was a proper Jordy, a proper English Jordy. Yeah. You know, he, yeah, he was awesome. Yeah. One of the best photographers ever, I think, in bodybuilding. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. He, he actually he was yeah he was absolutely the best. Yeah. 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 Flew to Orlando to give me that interview, man. Just for that Momo thing, man. After the whole thing happened, he flew right yeah. here I, a couple of months later, man. But uh, Chris himself flew for that. Yep. He oh, they wow. flew flew in all the way to Orlando when I was living here after the fact, and uh, to, just to come and give me an interview, man. We were we sat down for half a day, man. Had something to eat, and wow. But and just for that one thing. Wow. I think he was responsible for my crazy four-year contract. You know, so I, I heard that he called me the right away after the photo shoot. This is probably the best photo I've ever seen. So that's why he used to tell me, he said, what the hell are you doing? You know, three weeks before the show, you're the, the best in the world. And then at the show, you look just okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nothing, nothing like beating a man when he's down, huh? <laughs> Chris, Chris was brutally honest. Chris was, uh, yeah. he just told it as it was. Hey, yeah. Ian, is he still alive? Yes. No, he, he's passed away. Did he? Chris Lowe. Yeah, he passed away. And no, I can't remember I when, so. but yeah. Are you sure? He's, yeah, yeah, I'm almost positive Chris passed away. Look that up, baby. Double check me. I hope I'm wrong, but I think he did. Well, you, you know, but, did, did, were you all familiar with Peter McGough? Do what? Peter McGough. Do you remember Peter? Peter McGough? Oh, yeah, I love Peter. Well, Peter yeah. was oh. one of, I've known Peter since I was a teenager. I mean, Peter... I actually had uh, I had six uh, six six bypasses uh, just under just a bit less than two years ago, and Peter <coughs> was uh, in the final stages of uh, liver cancer. Yeah, and, uh, he passed away the day I got released from hospital. 
but me and Peter were very, very close, very, very close. Um, so he was one of my favorite people too. Uh, Peter was great. Peter was great. And he great. and Chris were very close. Well, that's yeah. kind of why I'm bringing yeah. Peter up. Yeah, because yeah. it was between Peter and Chris why I got my reader contract. Um, you know, Chris and Peter were just, they were just great people, man. Yeah, We're still in touch with uh, Anne, his wife. Uh, we speak to Anne regularly. In fact, she just returned to Florida. She just bought a house. Uh, that is so awesome. Yeah, yeah, we're in touch. We're, we're in close contact with them. But yeah, it's, uh, I think the whole uh, Mohammed Benaziz death, it definitely changed bodybuilding. Um, it made people more aware. But unfortunately, it didn't stop deaths, did it? Look, look what's awesome. happened. That's you the know, last you, couple of years. I know that's what I'm saying. You know, you, you would think we'd get wiser. And it's like we're getting dumber. Uh, well, not <laughs> us, but, you know, mm -hmm, the sport. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just, it's crazy, really. I mean, you would think people would see that, take note, and not do it again. But it's like everybody thinks it's not going to happen to them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so and 30 years ago, I could imagine... You know, you, there was no social media, so and people didn't know about it until they right. saw it in the magazine, right? Yeah, that's right. All right. That's right. Because they're not going to put so, that on the news. Isn't there any type of, of, of I thought there was some type of testing in uh, for diuretics in, within the IFBB and the NPC right now, or is that not, that they don't test that anymore, right? No, there, there was at one time. Yeah. There, they yeah. tried it for a while, but it, it, it's been a while. I don't know. JP, how long has it been? That started many years after uh, Momo died, I think 96 to 99. That's pretty okay. much it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, I haven't seen it in years. I did. I actually, did. actually, no, it went up to 2001 because I think Jay didn't pass a drug test. And then there was this whole legal back and forth in 2001 uh, where he was threatening the IFB with lawyers and. Uh, about the tests not being uh, taken the appropriate way. And then they kind of reversed that before uh, the show was over. Mm. But then it stopped again, yeah. I remember the 95 Grand Prix. I did the 95 Olympia, and then we did, went to do the Grand Prix. It was Madrid on the Thursday, I believe, Stuttgart, Germany on the Friday, and Nottingham, England on the Saturday. And um, Flex was in it, Chris Cormier was in it, uh, Vince Taylor, myself. Uh, that's, uh, we went to do, do the Spanish Grand Prix, and I was hardcore on my diet. I mean, I I I roomed with Paul DeMeo for, for that for that show, and uh, we were like on our diet religiously. And I think I got like eight. We went to got up and, to go to Stuttgart the following morning, and Flex wasn't feeling good. And by the time we landed in Stuttgart, me and NASA had to carry Flex to a, a cab. And he went straight to the hospital and he ended up on dialysis, I believe. He, he stayed there. He, he didn't compete again for the rest of the tour. And that was all diuretics. That was all to do with diuretics. Uh, so you would think mm. you would think one death would be all it took to make everybody else. In, in, 96, think... in 96, in the spring, uh, when I did the honors class, there were no diuretic tests. And then uh, Andy died, Münzer, although of, uh, not because of diuretics. Right. And then we got a letter two months before the Olympia 96, they were gonna test for diuretics, uh, glenbuterol, and some drugs like marijuana, cocaine, uh, but not steroids. <clears throat> so I don't know if it was because of Andy's death, but there was, again, there was many, many years after Momo died. Mm. Yeah. And in, in the German world, you know, where uh, we had kind of, our, in our way, our own bodybuilding world with our own magazines, uh, Germany, uh, Switzerland, and Austria, the Momo that did not shock us very much. The, the, it was the a Andy Münzer. That was really what, which retired some athletes and some athletes didn't come back. Momo, we were more kind of like, well, he's crazy anyway. Look at him, you know. <laughs> it was, yeah, because wow. I, I remember stories from the FIBO. There's no way of me knowing if they're true or not that he's <coughs> leaving leaving the boot every three or four hours to inject the minstrel. And there's no way of knowing that's right. I heard that from... Uh, uh, his sponsor, Better Bodies, he was uh, at the boot with. So we, when he when he died, we were all like, okay, you know. But then uh, Andy, uh, that really, really, it also was all over the press. And when the biggest German magazine, the Spiegel, uh, got a hold of Andy's drug protocol and published that, uh, that. we were all in total shock, you know, uh, that a human being can take so much stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, yeah. Was, uh, Andreas Munzer wasn't a big guy either. 
he wasn't a big yeah. man. I remember being stood next to him uh, when we were flying out to do the Arnold one year with me and Lee <coughs> LeBride were actually in his last show. And he was yeah. in the line going through passport control. And he wasn't a big man. He wasn't a big yeah. man at all, you know? I mean, he had great development, obviously, but mm -hmm. he, he wasn't a big dude. He, he was... Uh, hey, JP. Now, let me ask you. Our la My last show was the uh, show in San Jose. And yeah. 96, right? He was in that show. That was his last show, right? He died uh, a few days later. Mm. Yes. I was we in were, show. Uh, going to the airport together, and a week later, he guess, was supposed to guest post in Switzerland. And he was complaining at the airport about something in his lower stomach. <clears throat> uh, and I, I made right. a stupid remark to him, which I, I cannot even believe that uh, I was, you know, saying something so stupid. I said, I just eat a pizza. Because he was always on a diet, you know, 12 months a year. Mm -hmm. I said, just eat a pizza and you finally feel normal, you know, something like that. And Saturday, uh, his friend showed up at the show. I was waiting to, to, to meet him. And uh, the Tuesday he died, you know. Is one organ after another right. collapsed after uh, some inner bleedings in the stomach area. Mm -hmm. But you know, he was right. he was pretty much in shape twelve months a year, and then he was yeah. doing crazy work for uh, Albert Buzek. He worked in his gym, so he had a full work right. schedule. He uh, did guest posings to afford all the drugs. He went from discotheque to discotheque to, mm -hmm. to guest pose sometimes two or three times mm -hmm. a week. How old then was he when he died? Did, I don't know. He must have been in his early thirties too. I'm not sure. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I met him at uh, Albert Busak's gym, and we yeah. guest posed together in Germany. Yeah. yeah. And that's when I first met him. And you could see in his last two shows, the Arnolds, and uh, there was something in his lower stomach when he was flexing. You know, it's kind of you could see there's something going on there. And you know, said, we we heard the rumor that they opened him up and he had internal bleeding. He had bled yeah. tremendous bleeding. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Crazy, crazy. Why, yeah. why, why do you think you guys think they discontinued uh, the direct testing after like 2001? Because people started really getting on the control, you know, how to look good. In 96, you could see, you know, the level was a little different than 95, 94. Uh, some people had, Dorian came in clearly lighter. And before, uh, some people had extreme kind of problems to really dry out. But then 97, 98, 99, everybody kind of had it on the control. I mean, I know there's also Chad who had his secret kind of uh, powder or pills he sold, you know, which is theoretic you couldn't detect. But I I'm wondering, why did they reverse that in 2002? When we, I mean, wait, uh, I don't know. Wait. Why don't they do it today? Same, same reason. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, because it would really, uh, would really help. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But it saves some lives. Yeah, you don't, don't think, think you it... don't think it would change the conditioning, do you? No, I mean at first, maybe again, you know, some people would have to rethink this, this situation, and you cannot just eat every crap you you know. You have to really stick with a good system. But mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, when you look at Ronnie, ninety-eight, ninety-nine, uh, he passed. The diuretic test, and I know they did the diuretic test because some <clears> people did not pass. They did not just throw them away like at some amateur world championships. Yeah, uh, he was uh, as good as ever, if not his best shape. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember guys in in uh, 1991 um, using some diuretics and doing the Arnold Classic. And um, 92 was the year I 91 was the year I stopped using them. And 92 was my best year. And I did the whole tour in, in Europe without diuretics in the Olympia. You know, I, in 92, I placed fifth in the Arnolds and 11th in the Olympia. And that whole tour, um, I never used diuretics at all. I was too afraid. I had too many bad reactions. And I was able to control how to manipulate my body to that point. And I still know I to do a little more to get tighter. But um, I didn't want to play with that stuff anymore, man. And I just, I got off it for all of 92. I pretty much didn't use them my whole career, except a little bit of the European tour. But the European oh. tour, I was so I had so much water and I ate so much crap. It really didn't really matter, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> so and I was constantly drinking water. So, you know, it's just kind of from like being uh, in eighty percent shape. I was in eighty-five percent shape. You know, I used to take a, a liquid Lasix two or three hours before the show and started peeing immediately like a cow, you know. Mm. So, but there was no danger in any way. You know, I, I, I was eating, drinking normal. But all my big shows, the Mystery Universe, the Arnold's, 
the Arnolds uh, in 96, a friend convinced me not to take diuretics because we, we did the amateur shows without diuretics because at the Miss Universe, they did test you. And uh, he said, look, uh, you're so big and, and just you're going to be flat, you know. And uh, then the 96, 97, 98, 99 Olympia, they were all tested. So I didn't take any. And after that, I didn't really compete anymore. Yeah. So you know, I never really took them. Porter, you said something a while ago, man, when, before I was trying to get on here. And I think you're right. And I'm, I'm, I'm wondering what you guys think about that, that the, the bodybuilding, the way bodybuilding was in the 90s was, I think, by far more superior and aesthetic and, and just a, such a prettier look. And I, to to where the guys had that, you know, look at how the symmetry and the proportions we had back in the day and now where we are. And I, I really believe that that was a major role, man. I mean, we, we were the 90s were the era for us. It was the best time. Well, I, I do believe it was the best conditioning as far yeah. as I'm concerned, you know, and that's what I always saw that first conditioning. And you notice now the guys are not as conditioned I, I don't know. think it's, I think it's more because they use more chemicals and the energy is a little bit higher and it inhibits you from getting in the kind of a grainy look that we would get in the nineties. Um, but, you know, I, I think bodybuilding is just different, you know, and I think it changed in around 96, 97 with Dorian yep. and it kept escalating and it became something different. You, you think the reason for, that being is the judges started rewarding the bigger physiques. Absolutely. Spot on. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They had the control over it. And you know, guys, I'm not going to, I'm not trying to be disrespectful to anyone, but the reason they didn't test for diuretics after Momo, because they don't really care. I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, it's about the almighty dollar. Mm -hmm. And they knew that would have probably have a major effect, but it got to the point where they had no other recourse probably than to say, hey, you know what, we've got to test something because they were coming, people were coming down on about testing for steroids and all the above. So they probably, you know, said, okay, I'll tap out and we'll test at least for diuretics because really that is the culprit. Ian, yeah. you had a major issue from diuretics. Yeah. Most people uh, have issues with insulin and diuretics. Most people. Um, it takes, I don't know of anyone that has actually died from steroid usage other than they might cause major complications in their cardiovascular health, mm -hmm. their liver mm -hmm. enzymes or something of that nature, renal failure, renal problems. But above and beyond that, the most, the, the dangerous, most dangerous thing is the diuretics. Right, the back and that day. It absolutely is. Do you think it's just the, the lack of knowledge of it, or is it just all altogether just the diuretics? I mean, do you think well, if, they, so, if they knew the dosage of what to take, it would be okay? Yeah, sure. And I think everyone always thinks with this ideology that more is better. You know, when I tell people, uh, I mean, I always tell people if they ask me what kind of chemicals they use. I remember, guys, it, it cost me $400 in chemicals to get ready for my first Mr. Olympia. The only diuretic I would ever use until they started testing, I think uh, uh, it was, I came in 96, 97. You uh, well, stated it early, but somebody did. And the only thing I would use is I'd use uh, 25 milligrams of a, 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 doc, a doctor's eye, which is a form of a doctor on a diazide. Mm -hmm. And I would take 12.5 milligrams in the morning, 12.5 in the evening. That's all I would do three or four weeks out or, or two, two weeks out and carry it on through the, the, the May shows or the Olympia shows, you know, where you do the European tour. I never took a lot of stuff yeah. ever. And then when they started testing, everyone was using Bumex. Now Bumex is one milligram, but it's very, very, very powerful. They use it for congestive heart failure in hospitals. Mm -hmm. And I messed up one time and I took two milligrams by accident. And I thought I was going to die. Oh. I mean, I thought I was going to die. So they just used different chemicals. Then people were using them. Just different mm -hmm. chemicals, more dangerous chemicals. Yeah. Porter, what is that drug you just mentioned? Bumex. What is it? It's a one milligram Bumex is what they use for someone who would come into the hospital. And it's a very, very, very powerful one milligram diuretic. And I mean, it's out of your system in six hours. So you <clears> would test <throat> negative. I would use it before my shows. And I didn't like it at all because you feel like crap. But it, it does aid a little bit and if you have any subcutaneous fluid buildup. Mm -hmm. But um, that's what they used in, you know, in situations if you came into the hospital with congestive heart failure, boom, they were right off the mat, would put you on Bumex. 
So it takes the fluid out of the heart, basically, from yeah, around the yeah, heart. Yeah, very quickly. Yes, okay. exactly. Or surrounding the heart. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So you think it's that's what hard. a lot of com you think that's what a lot of competitors in ninety eight, ninety nine, two thousand took. Yep. I had absolutely. no idea. I had no absolutely. idea. I used it, and uh, and I, I think a lot of people were using it because it's it, it was the only chemical at that time that I knew that was in and out of your system in time for you to be able to test positive. I negative. used to, I used to night after night, we had this big medical book uh, in Switzerland. I used to go through it and try and try and try to find, find something. Yeah. Uh, in 96, I, I couldn't really find anything. There was some weird plasma expander, which we tried, which is supposed to shift. Well, can I tell you, can I tell you something that, um, it was Gary, remember Gary Stridham, Gary? Yeah. And before they went to the WBF guys? Yeah. There was two bodybuilders. I can't remember his name, but he always came in absolutely sliced. A black guy, ball headed, beautiful physique. Real Javier. Yes, thank you very much. Do you know what he did? Yeah. He used clear alcohol, vodka, the night before a show, because vodka, tequila, acts as a diuretic. In my understanding, I was told that by one of his best friends, he would be tipsy. I'll use that terminology because <laughs> he was using a clear alcohol, either vodka or tequila, as a diuretic. Wow. Right. Yeah, right now. I knew him pretty well. <clears throat> now, yeah. I could be wrong, but it's my understanding that guy was incredibly conditioned. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah. Well, he was sliced. Yeah. Mm -hmm. he, 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 had, he, he had shredded glutes oh, that my. were amazing. Yeah. It's like blew me away. It blew yeah. me away. He was so sharp. Yeah. Um, remember, wasn't he there? Was he there with us in 92? No. Mm -hmm. He wasn't. I don't think. I can't, I can't remember him being there. I don't remember. I was on many shows with him back in the day. So it might have been before that. I don't remember competing with him. I think he had kind of stepped down when I started competing. It was before 92. Okay. Yeah. But man, that guy was in shape. That's what I think, mm. I understand. But I do know alcohol works as a diuretic. Yeah. That kind of alcohol. Yeah. yeah. Or, do you ever have any injuries or illnesses or anything while you were competing? When I competed? Yeah. Um, the, when I played second to Kevin um, at the Night of the Champions in 92, uh, I was sick. No injuries? A, Didn't tear, no tears had, or anything? Oh, now after after I retired from body, but I got into boxing mm -hmm. and uh, I tore my labor in boxing and I was jumping a lot of rope in the lower lobe of my teardrops after body, build, but never during body. Okay. Build. Okay. I guess I was curious. No, no, I was very blessed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I never mm -hmm. had anything like that happen. And, um, and, you know, but, you know, I got lucky. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I got lucky. How do, how do you train now, Potter, and how do you eat? What's your diet and what's, what's your training regime? Uh, I, honestly, uh, I'm, I'm a type of person I do not crave any food at all. I mean, no one – food controlled my life for so many years. I had an eating disorder in my bodybuilding career. I had a form of bulimia. I just didn't tell people. And um, I kept it under wraps, and then I finally got it in control the last three, three years of my career. But I don't care about food. I basically eat the same way I did when I was bodybuilding. I just, um, if I miss a meal or I can't eat at a certain time, I don't sweat it. Uh, I don't eat junk. I very seldom eat anything bad. Um, but I eat healthy. I'm a, I, most people would consider me a health fanatic. Like I don't mm -hmm. drink. I don't do anything. You know, and uh, I, unfortunately, you know, once you're on chemicals for so long, uh, your endocrine system is going to shut down. You're going to go through andropause, which I did. I was clean for 10 years after bodybuilding. And then once my son was born, I knew I was in andropause. So I've been on uh, TRT for uh, 13 years now, just 100 milligrams a week. Other than that, above and beyond that, that's all I do. Yep. <clears throat> you know, and I just eat healthy like I did when I was a bodybuilder. Mm -hmm. That's, I, you know, I don't, you know, I don't deviate from that, really. And uh, I have a more balanced diet, and I make sure I get an adequate amount of fats in my diet, because it's one of the most important macronutrients you can do. Other than that, yeah. What is, Porter, if you don't mind, what do you take for TRTs? Huh? What do you take for TRTs? Uh, Sipinate, 100 milligrams every seven days, and I use a Nasterzol, a 0.25 with a Nasterzol when I do that, so I don't get that spike. Hmm. Right. Interesting, man. Yeah, it's, imp it's important. Um, yeah. I thought about, like, you know, I can honestly tell you this much. 
I would give anything to do another cycle just to have that feeling again. But no, I would never go there. I have a son. I have a 13-year-old son. I'm going to tell you something, guys. And I don't think any of you have ever experienced this, okay? After 30 years to go on TRTs, and JP, I talked to him about it a little bit. He knows, man. We, we were discussing some stuff several months ago. But for the first time in 30 years, and that was back in May when I started, and all I did was 0.5 milligrams a week of cypionate, okay? 50 milligrams, I should say. 50 milligrams a week and 50 milligrams of uh, parabolin. And I put on 15 solid pounds. Mm. You're taking uh, parabolin too? I just, I just stopped it a month ago, man. I was doing 50 milligrams of that. And uh, I put- There's 50 me thinking it's because you were eating meat. <laughs> 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 you, you shyster, you. <laughs> Ian comes out of nowhere. <laughs> All the mountain that was, Sorry, I was uh, coming to the park hole, man. I, I wanted to train again and do something different. I said, you know, I got to try the TRTs. Let me see what's going on here, man. And um, absolutely blew my mind after 30 years. And it's just 15 pounds, like, no problem. And I'm training, the Porter, you don't know this. I talked to the guys a little bit about this before. <laughs> I'm training more and harder than I am, than I did back in the day. I'm training more now. I'm training harder now than I did. For real? And, it's unbelievable. I don't even know what it is. You know, it's just, I left something in the tank back then, uh, you know, and um, I'm, my sets and reps are through the roof, you know, not heavyweight, but moderately heavy. And like I said, and I just scratched the surface and, you know, like you, I'm, I'm the same way. I eat very healthy and, um, but I'm not consistent. So I couldn't imagine if I was consistent going on just another mini cycle. And that the one I'm in, I called that like an extra mini, mini one, man. <laughs> what do you mean you're not consistent? In terms of my eating, you know, I'll miss a meal here and there. I mean, I'm not dieting. Oh, yeah, that's okay, though. That's okay. But, yeah. but, uh, but I, I'll still get all my meals in, but I don't sweat it. You know, it, it just might not be at a certain time, you know. But I will tell you, though, uh, being, being, having low levels of testosterone C is yeah. detrimental to your overall health and well-being. So it's, it's great that you started. It took me a long time to realize that. I saw a difference right away, and people don't realize it, man. Mm -hmm. But I've done... Mm -hmm. One thing, um, and I, most of these guys know that too. I don't. I'm not a meat eater, brother. I don't eat meat. Maybe once a month if I'm lucky. But I'm. No, mainly I, no, hold on. When there, clarify meat, are you talking poultry as meat, or just poultry I, and then meat? Any poultry, any red meat. Maybe once a month I'll go indulge on something, but it's mostly fish. A couple of eggs here and there. A lot of plant-based foods, man. Wow. Yeah, I'm I never more, eat red meat, but I do eat. I eat turkey and chicken. Yeah, I'm more plant. -based. Just, you know, and then, you know, it's funny you say that the argument out there, I was hearing this the other day with this lady, Dr. Gabrielle, along with uh, Michael Hearn. And they were talking about red meat being like the Superman food. It's like, I, I, I'm not on board with that. Not man. a fan. I, I'm not a fan. I've done too much research on it. And it's just, I don't agree with it. But, you know, then here's a doctor talking with Mike saying that red meat is the best for bodybuilding. And you see all these people on Instagram and everything using red meat like crazy. It's very what? difficult for your body to digest it, number yeah. one. And mm -hmm. most studies show that people that eat large amounts or a lot of red meat have a higher incidence of colon cancer. Oh, 100%. And, and it's hard to convey that to people. They don't realize. Higher you cholesterol can... too, right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Spot on. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. And yeah, no yeah. doubt. Of... Every once in a while, if you want a lean steak, I just teach people balance. Find a balance. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Every once in a while, I, I will grab. <laughs> I'm losing the Steve again. <clears throat> He's freezing. Well, speaking of, you know, having the desire sometimes to take a little, make uh, get on the little cycle or something. So every year when I go back to Switzerland uh, for uh, our show, the Swiss Grand Prix, because I know I'll be on stage a lot. I'm doing interviews. Sometimes, you know, two months before, because I'm taking 100 milligram testosterone a week, I think about right. it. Uh, maybe like... It's a little bit of deco or, or I, I just can't do it <laughs> mentally. I, I, I can't because I, I don't want to. I'm afraid I'm going to die. And, uh, and I mean, I'm on, the, on quite a few peptides, you know, and beside the testosterone, I take regularly HCG and I take the IGF LR3, Kiss Peptin 10, you know, and then I take uh, anti inflammatory peptides like TPC 157, TV 500, and TPV. Uh, occasionally VIP. I, I'm on a, on a peptide program and it I makes me feel... Know those, huh? 
yeah, feel feel mm. makes me feel so really good. But going back on steroids, I, I just I, I in a way I made myself a promise, you know, when I was uh, in that hospital after my accident, after my squatting accident, I said no more, never again. And yet yeah, testosterone I have to obviously take, mm. and uh, but I, I just can't do it. I never will again. I absolutely I agree hundred percent with you. I can't do it either. You know, nothing. I don't, but, but I have, um, I am at a point where my IGF one is lower than it should be. So I don't like, you know, the, the, the peptides and I don't feel good with them. So I have done like two months at a time of four to six units a, a week of growth hormone, real growth hormone and to bring up my IGF one, but I don't stay on it consistently. Oh, crap. Yeah. Or guys, you don't, you don't, they won't work for you. What's that? Peptides, tried them. I, 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 they, they seem to cause hypoglycemia with me. Uh, mm -hmm. Samarlin is one, and you know, um, which mm -hmm. is that's what you can yeah, get a script it, for it, now. It's definitely something to keep an eye on, but I carry it for the little workouts I do and for the little food I eat, I carry a, an amazing amount of size. And how, how, think, how much do you weigh right now, if you don't mind me asking? At 235, 240. And you, what are you, 6'2", six, 6'3"? Six, no, 5'11". Are you really, you look taller than that. I thought you was taller than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I used to be 5'11 and a half. <laughs> 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 but I, I really, I really, the really peptides really work for me. I do, I do a weekly blood sugar uh, tests in the morning. I want to make sure my uh, sensitivity, uh, insulin sensitivity is not changing. So I wouldn't mind to take a uh, 24-hour insulin if I have to, but there's no need for it. And I really, right. really... And my arthritis I used to have in the neck and in my hands. So when I'm on the PPC 157 or TP 500, I do 20 days of PPC 157, 20 days of TP 500, and 20, 20 days of TPV. I feel nothing and I feel great. Really? Uh, is, I, that a, my, is that sub Q? Do you take that sub Q or orally? Uh, no, I, take, I, I inject it. So, uh, uh -huh. yeah, with the small in, insulin needle sub Q, you, you know. Right. So I, I'm absolutely a believer in it. It started all with PPC uh, 157 many years ago when I had an accident. Uh, I fell off a quad, a desert vehicle, and broke both collarbones. Wow. And it just took forever to heal. I mean, it's just, it just didn't heal. Uh, six months later, I was still jerking around with 25-pound tumbles. And a friend of mine told me about it. And I started injecting it uh, near the collarbones uh, twice a day, 250 microgram, and in with two or three weeks, it was like an 80% improvement. Oh, really? And oh. uh, yeah, so that's what that's awesome. got me hmm. got me to link into it. And whenever I find a new peptide, you know, I, I get in touch with Dr. Schottel. I discuss it with him. I try to do as much research, although it's difficult sometimes because it's not uh, there's not a lot of human studies done. Hmm. And yeah. I did make some mistakes you know so there's this peptide vip <clears throat> i can't tell you exactly what it stands for which uh, should generate your heart and that's also good inflammatory peptide i remember um, i went on a it's very very hard to research what the right dosage is because there's only animal studies made there's a very limited study at the beginning of covid with like 31 individuals uh, it was great the effect on the lungs, you know, people had COVID, but then the FDA didn't accept, the, accept it because they, they didn't think 31 is a real study. What's this uh, one? What, what, what's this? VIP? VIP. VIP. Yeah, yeah, I can tell you in a second what it stands for. So I, you know, I, I found, I went through all the studies there are, and uh, I found some reports written by doctors and pretty much, they told you if you want to try, I think it's worth it. But I mean, it comes to dosage on your own body. <laughs> so I, I did go very low. So the company I buy the stuff from, it's a very popular company. Often uh, they sell each vial uh, lasting for a month with most products. When you look at the IGF, the TB500. So I thought, okay, although they don't give you any advice in dosage, they just refer you to the studies. On their website and then you have to go on your own so i just just kind of cut the dosage of a mile into 30 uh, 30 days and it was great i felt good you know I, first two or three days i was coughing a little bit so I thought maybe it does help my lungs because i had uh, a few years after i retired i smoked weed but i very regrettably like f four or five years 
And uh, the very last dose I had, uh, I took 250 microgram a day. So I had double left, you know, I just took the rest out of the vial and it was 500. So I thought, ah, come on, you know, it's freaking peptide, you know? Mm -hmm. So I injected it and I had a very strange feeling, you know, it was like, I, 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 I was like, oh my God, I hope I'm going to be fine. You know, my heart started beating a little bit. So, but other than that, it's like the only incident I ever had with a peptide. And I, I absolutely convinced I can keep a good size and uh, it's a good anti-aging component. So I will continue <coughs> doing that. That's hmm. interesting because I, I haven't taken, I mean, I, I did my last show in 1998, uh, Arnold Klasky in 98, and I pro-wrestled after that for a few years. And I took a little bit of propionate when I pro-wrestled, but I mean a little bit, like maybe twice a week for a month before a, a, a televised bout. But probably for, well, I was 28 when I retired from bodybuilding. I probably retired from wrestling at like 32, 33. And from 33 to now, so that's over 20 years, I haven't taken anything, nothing, no, no testosterone at all. But mm -hmm. Dr. Shuttle put me on e about six months ago. And the last time I had my blood work done, it was down to 300, my free test. And just with the clomiphene that I've been using, and I don't do it every day, I do it every third day. Um, my, my, my testosterone has gone from 300 to 600. Clomiphene is great, absolutely. You know, so. Is that the same, is that same as Clomid? Same thing or? It's not, it's slightly different, but basically what it does, it makes your brain tell your gonads to produce more, more of your own testosterone. Yeah, pituitary gland, it deals pituitary, with that, yeah. 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 So that, it's that, kind of in the in the similar. It works kind of similar in a way. Like uh, you can do clomid, clomiphene. I think it's the best of it, and you can try it with Nolvadex, and uh, HCG. I feel very good on HCGs. So I used to take it occasionally, every four or five weeks for a week, mm -hmm. but that didn't really uh, get my sperm uh, volume back and uh, the way I wanted. Uh, so I went on uh, twice a week, thousand, uh, just over a longer period of time. I'm like, it's now week 12 or so, and it, it's fantastic, the effect that I have on it. Why do you do that? Is that for health or just because you want more? It's just, <laughs> it just freaking, I, I don't want to, you know, I, I don't know how far we can go in on a podcast, but there's something has to come out of it, for God's sake. Yeah. You know? <laughs> that's, when he fi that's when he films his other podcast. You are a sicko. <laughs> you know that? You're a sicko, JP. Yeah, you ask me, so what can I do? <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah. Hey Porter, let me ask you: What's your training like today? Being over sixty, how's your training? Um, I train with a, a great deal. Of, I, I, I train very fast, and I've always been a fast trainer. Uh, but I work out four days a week with the same level and t of intensity I did um, <laughs> when I was bodybuilding. I just don't. I don't. Of course, I can't use the poundages. No. I go as heavy as I can, but um, I'm just methodical about warming up and. Uh, I train hard because if you don't create stimulus, you won't be able to even maintain what you have. Right. You know, so uh, I'm, I'm kind of like the, I have the ideology, get in and get out gotcha. and get your workout done. And, um, but one thing I, I will say though, one thing I need to do for myself is because I train so fast, but I need to do more cardio, but I'm so busy. Right. It's hard for me to get cardio in a lot. So I try to do a combination of anaerobic aerobic with my training sessions. Are you training each body part once a week only? Yes. Okay. Yes. And you said you're so, personal training, right? Yes, yeah, my 26 years. Okay. And that's, yeah, your, full, that's my, your full time job. Yeah. Yeah. I have my own gym now. Okay. And okay. about three years ago, I was tired of renting, you know, from gyms and you never know when you're going to get, you know, shut out. Or right. I said, the heck with this. So a couple of my buddies and I said, let's just open our own facility. So we got a really incredible 3,000 square foot gym i mean it's a complete gym and the thought process is when i when i opened it up one of my partners mike i said listen mike he was a competitor too i said i want to be not that i would but if i ever had to compete and get ready for a show i could do it in this gym and that's the way we put it together nice but whereabouts is that gym part of it's uh on shelby road in louisville kentucky uh in village square shopping center and it's really a, a really nice place What's and uh and the only way you can be connected to that gym is to be with a trainer. Mm -hmm. 
So Porter, you hear thinking they're they're bringing back the Masters Olympia next year, man? What are your thoughts? <laughs> no way, Jose. You know, and you know Henderson, I think, uh, is getting He's, ready for that. Mm-hmm. You know, so you know, no, 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 I have no desire. I have no mm-hmm. desire. Yeah, like, Henderson hardly go to a bodybuilding show. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, so, Porter. What if, what if there's an over sixty? What is that? What if, what if there's an over sixty? Would you think about it? Would the thought no. cross your mind? No. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, no, I, I'm no. with that. I've been, I've been there and done that. Okay. You guys now, see? What, uh, would, you, would, you go ahead. Huh? would you compete again, Phil? I, you, you know, I would think about it, and I'd probably get in the mirror and hate the way I looked, and probably wouldn't I, do it for that reason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would think about it. <laughs> but it would be a passing thought. It would you be know? a passing thought for sure. Yeah. I, mm-hmm. You know, you know what's you know what's incredible, guys, and I, I, it happens all the time to me. Sometimes I I dream that I'm getting ready for a show again, and you know everything happens, and I'm thinking, hold up now, this is not the way it used to be. This doesn't look the way it used to look. But I got like I'm forced to compete, and I'm panicking in this dream. I don't know why it happens. You know, and I guess it happens to everyone, or I, you know, something that happened. I forgot my, my posing trunks, or I forgot the diet, or whatever the case may be. Mm. It's, it, it's funny. Yeah, go ahead, Steve. Or he's competing in October first in Nevada, I think. Who? Henderson. I, is he really? Yeah, I guess I was. I thought it was the Masters Olympia he was doing. He wants to compete. Apparently, he's competing in October first. That's what he told me. It's on the, in our chat we had, man. That's coming up next crazy. week. Yeah. Oh. Well, Have you well, guys seen uh, Big Ramy's post? Oh my yeah, god! I've seen, yeah, yeah, I looked at that. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm. I'm sorry. I, I don't. I don't know. I just don't see the condition. I mean, he's still far out though, so it doesn't matter. No, he's not far out, is he? How, many How far? Out? Where's the Miss Olympia? Uh, oh, December seventeenth. Oh, 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 he looks good then for it. Where he is? I kept yeah, thinking it's September. Talk about it was days, good. fourteen hours ago, the front relaxed. I'm about to put it up right here. Yeah, I, I'm just looking at it right now. Right here. This was just posted twelve hours ago. It says. Uh, Unbelievable. He's starting that's, his start of my contest crazy. diet, he's 337.7 pounds. Jeez. That is insane. It's a Marvel that's Comics, crazy. boys. What it is, it's a new hero. Yeah. <laughs> but, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to take away from his physique, but to me, the, beauty's, the beauty is gone. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. 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 Do you, do you guys I, think he's going to keep his title? Oh, oh so look at, most likely. You, yeah, they come in dial. Yeah, most likely. Yeah, dial. Dial. him. You know how they are. Yeah, JP, what do you think? Oh, one hundred percent. I mean, I mean, Nick, Nick is too wide in the middle. You know, it's not. You know, it's no way. I, I give. A, I could. The surprise could be Dauda, Samson. Mm-hmm. You know. Uh, he is really incredible. Are they accused? What was the talk the other day? Is they accusing Rami of doing synthol? Well, he had this very awkward picture. Uh, I don't know why he posted that. Maybe it's him. Oh, here you go, like six posting down or nine. You can see it. It's really awkward. Awkward. One, two, three, four, five, nine postings down uh, on his Instagram page. That Where he's just standing there this. with his uh, shirt off. And shorts. Yeah, it looks weird, his shoulder, you know. It looks suspicious, yeah. yes. I mean, I think it's probably, he injects probably a lot in his shoulders. I don't say, I, I don't think he takes in, though. It's just probably makes all his injections into his shoulders, and he's going to have to probably stop that, you know. But this better today is a little better, but it, it is yeah. awfully round. It's not, it's not pulling up for some reason. <laughs> I'm, I'm not too surprised after I heard that uh, he only really trained six months last year for because of personal uh, problems or issues. You know, this year he pretty much focused all year on the Olympia, so I'm not surprised he looks wow. a little better. So he will win. Yeah. Hmm. Cool. Does anyone of you all know how Master El Sabadi passed? Heart failure. Is, heart yeah, failure, yeah. Yeah. Heart failure. yeah. yeah, congestive heart failure. Yeah, we did an episode on that about a month or so ago on a couple of wow. Yeah, we did uh he was young. we did Dallas. We did we did a few of the guys. Yeah, I liked NASA. NASA was always cool with me. Me and NASA got along. Did a few photo shoots with him and uh it was sad. 
You competed with him, didn't you, Porter? Yeah, actually, and uh, a couple of times, uh, twice, there was an incident. I don't know what was wrong with him, but he he did a guest posing, but I kind of came in as, he was there, but I did the guest posing for him. Mm -hmm. He had some type of thing where he couldn't guest pose. I don't know what it is specifically, but I remember doing a a couple of guest posings with him and for him. Mm -hmm. You know, but but I like Nasser. Yeah, I competed with him two, three, four, five times, six times, maybe more than that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I really, you know? I really liked his his physique. I really. I think what yeah. at the latter part of his career, he started using synthol, right? Uh, I think so. Like in his shoulders, he had a bearing on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Had a negative um, effect on him. For years, he had this nasty infection. I think in his left shoulder. Yeah, had you're to, exactly right. Mm-hmm. Had to cut it open several times, and uh, he used he used a lot of synthol. Uh, starting uh, pretty much, the, it became very obvious 98, 99 Arnold's, and then it be, gotten worse from there. Mm-hmm. It gotten so bad that you couldn't see a separation between shoulders and arms anymore. It just kind of became addicted to Sinto, the feeling of it, you know. Mm-hmm. I, I took a little bit in my triceps in uh, 97, and just a little bit to, to make my front double biceps look better. And it's incredible, the feeling, because you wake up in the morning and it feels like you just did 20 sets of triceps. Wow. Mm. Well, uh, do you all remember Escaline? Yeah, yeah they, they, they don't yeah. of it, yes. Yeah. I, I remember I, I, everyone, with, Momo was using Escaline a lot, right, Steve? Yeah. And yeah. I, yeah, there was a lot of people. Mm, I'm not familiar with that. I remember it, yeah. yeah I I remember remember it. Kind of a sight injection. Now, did, yeah, exactly did, right. Does Synthol work like, like, did it right away? Does it show? what it does or does it take a little while before it starts well i'm gonna tell you i can only tell you what i did you know i mean i know they're recommending it to take it in off season we don't don't recommend anybody taking anything i'm just curious period of time know what what the the makers and the one person who sells it really or has the permission to sell it recommend to take it in off season as i I have no experience with that but uh about three weeks before the olympia i did the five cc shot in my triceps Mm -hmm. Uh, very in, on the inside, you know, so I'm going to make sure it's not going to start to look washed out. And then I waited five days and another 5cc and then waited five days, another 5cc. And that was it. It, it created a real nice roundness from the front mm-hmm. in my front double biceps pose because I was a little bit worried about, about that. And, and I didn't have a triceps before with striation and something, you know, it, it wouldn't be too obvious. It wasn't too obvious. So nobody really uh, noticed anything. But then, of course, I loved the feeling so much and the way my front of the biceps looked like 98, I tried it for my biceps too and it, it created a mess. I mean, yeah, my yeah. arms look absolutely ridiculous, you know, so mm-hmm. I never touch it again after that. Yeah, I've heard too many bad stories about it. I would never. Uh, yeah. But I, I did have some success with athletes. Mm-hmm. I trained, you know, in the triceps or so, but all, all just like very little in the, in the prep, you know, I, I never tried it with anybody consistently in off season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. Wow. Well, and it Ed, Ed really scared me, you know, when he told me that he thinks that Sinto killed more athletes than steroids, you know, at Connors. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, that kind of, then I had one uh, really great athlete. I mean, great athlete is always kind of in the top five of the nationals, which, uh, became very sick. We used it a little bit longer in the prep, in his triceps. And uh, I have no idea if there was any connection to Sintol, but his kidneys started yeah. really uh, bad. And so after that, all any of my athletes, I refused to even talk about mm-hmm. it. You know? Yeah, uh, we don't really talk about it much on here either. That very rarely. Yeah. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. That's all I got tonight, Got Porter, man, we really thank you for coming on. We've been trying to get you forever. Well, I really, I really appreciate appreciate you having me, yeah. and uh, you know, and uh, I appreciate being able to chat with everyone. And I just want everyone to know that I think back now on my bodybuilding career and how how extremely proud I was to be able to stand on stage with you guys, every single one of you. You know, it's very memorable moments for me. You know, I don't and, remember, uh, but thank you, thank you. Well, not, <laughs> maybe not you, but everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> everyone else you know and it was great great yeah. times and just yeah. didn't realize how precious they were when we were yeah. doing it yeah they were <laughs> thank you 
Yeah. Yeah, I'm days. thankful for all you guys for being on here. I mean, I, I love it. You guys are legends, man. Porter, I'm really honored to have finally spoken to you. I actually run bodybuilding shows. I run a federation called the PCA that originated in England, and we have shows all over the country. But the uh -huh. next time I'm, we have one in Kentucky, next time I'm in Kentucky, I would like to come and see you if that's possible. Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. awesome. Absolutely. I'll reach out to you on it. You're on Instagram, right? Yes. I'll yep. reach out to you on Instagram and I'll exchange the details so that when I'm up there, probably like June, July, when we're going to be doing a show up there. But I would, I, would love to, I would love to come and see you, Jim, and meet you. <laughs> that would be great. That would be awesome, Ian. Hey, Porter, what was it, what's the name of your gym? It's a Pro Fitness Training Studio. Now, is that for personal trainers only? Yeah. Or do you have you do sell to memberships to bodybuilders who want to train? No, no. You, there, you, ha you have to be a trainer. And the only way you can be in the gym is if you're connected to a trainer. We've got five trainers, six gotcha. trainers. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. Awesome. As a matter of fact, we, we brought one more on board. And uh, so they bring their, she's got 35 members or 35 clients. So she'll bring them in. So we've got about 100, 165, 75 people in the gym. That's not bad. Wow. Not bad at all. Awesome. Yeah. No, we're busy. We're busy all the time. Each person has their own individual business, though, so it's great. Hmm. That's good. Cool. Awesome. Okay. All thank right. you, guys. All right, thank gentlemen. You guys. Steve, all you. right. All right. All, all, you, you all take care of yourself. Oh, Phil, yes. take care of yourself. You too. Everybody have a good evening. Y'all okay, be careful. All right. Steve, I'll call you soon.